10 Best Picks presents the top 10 best 80 to 85 inch TVs. Starting at number 10, Samsung UN85 JU7185 inch. The Samsung JU7100 is a great 4K LED TV. With the exception of the discoloration it gets when viewed at an angle, it has impressive picture quality. It is also a great gaming TV, with low input lag and minimal motion blur. For lower resolutions like DVDs, digital clean view set to high does a great job of reducing compression artifacts and increasing the amount of detail without softening the picture. The contrast ratio is average. It's a little bit subpar when compared to some other VI panels, but unless they are side to side, you won't really notice the difference between blacks of 0. 032 CDM2 and 0. 020 CDM2. Update 16-2017. We have changed the methodology of testing. Since this is an old TV which we don't have anymore, we extrapolated the results from 2016 TVs. The Samsung JU7100 has great picture quality, assuming you don't sit at an angle. It is better than last year's Samsung 4K TVs for gaming, thanks to the lower input lag. Upscaling works better than the competition, so you don't need to worry about 1080p content looking soft on this TV. At number 9. Sony X900H 85-inch. The Sony X900H, also sold as the X90CH at Costco, is a great 4K TV for nearly any type of content. It has a VI panel with an excellent contrast ratio and a full-array local dimming feature that makes blacks look even better in the dark. It's well suited for bright rooms, as it has decent reflection handling and gets bright enough to easily overcome glare. It displays fast-moving scenes with minimal blur thanks to its quick response time and optional black frame insertion feature. Gamers should be happy with its low input lag, which remains low even when playing in 4K with 10-bit HDR. Unfortunately, the advertised variable refresh rate support is not yet functional. Also, its viewing angles are quite narrow, so images look washed out when viewed from the side. The metal feet slide into the TV itself instead of being screwed on, making setup easier. It has a wide footprint, but there's plenty of space in front for a soundbar without obstructing the screen. The back of the TV looks very similar to the Sony X950H, with the same horizontal brush texture. There are clips included in the box to tie the cables to the feet for cable management. The Sony X900H is a great TV for mixed usage. Its picture quality is great thanks to its excellent contrast ratio, high peak brightness, and wide color gamut. HDR content also looks good, with rich colors and highlights that pop for the most part. Gamers should appreciate its fast response time and low input lag, although VRR support is currently missing. Unfortunately, it's less suited to watching with larger groups because it has narrow viewing angles that make the image look washed out from the side. Number 8 of my list. Sony XBR85X800H85. The Sony X800H, also known as the X80H or XH80, is a decent TV and a nice upgrade over its predecessor, the Sony X800G. It has an IPS panel with wide viewing angles, making it a great choice for large seating areas. Visibility is good in well-lit environments as it gets bright enough to overcome glare, However, its mediocre contrast ratio makes blacks look grayish, which isn't ideal for darkroom viewing. Gamers should be happy with its fast response time and low input lag, but the refresh rate is limited to 60 Hz, and it doesn't support any variable refresh rate technology. Its Android TV interface runs pretty smoothly, and there's a large library of apps available through the Google Play Store. Also, it has a microphone built into the remote, allowing for voice control through Google Assistant. The 2020 Sony X800H is a direct replacement for the 2019 Sony X800G. It's an entry-level TV in the 2020 Sony lineup. Its main competitors are likely the Samsung TU8000, LG UN8500, and the Vizio M7 Series Quantum 2020. Simple design in the back, which is made entirely out of plastic. There's minimal cable management with two hooks that are meant to attach the cables to the feet. This might be disappointing for some people. The Sony X800H is a decent overall TV. It can get bright in SDR and displays 480p, 
720p, 1080p, and 4K content well with no upscaling artifacts. The viewing angles are great if you plan on putting this TV in a wide room, but unfortunately, the contrast ratio is mediocre, so blacks look gray in a dark room. With an incredibly low input lag and good response time, this TV performs best for sports or video games. HDR content doesn't look great as it doesn't get bright enough to make highlights stand out. With no risk of permanent burn-in, this TV also serves well as a computer monitor. Coming at number 7. Samsung UN85TU8000FXZA. The Samsung TU8000 is an entry-level budget TV from Samsung's 2020 lineup, also sold as the TU8200 at Walmart. Despite lacking a local dimming feature, it displays deep blacks thanks to its outstanding contrast ratio and remarkable black uniformity, making it best suited to watching dark content in a dark room. While it supports HDR10+, it doesn't deliver a satisfying HDR experience because its color gamut is somewhat limited and it doesn't get bright enough to bring out highlights in HDR content. Unfortunately, it also has narrow viewing angles, so the image looks washed out when viewed from the sides, but this is expected from a VI panel. On the upside, it has a decent response time that results in clear motion and a remarkably low input lag for a responsive gaming experience, but there's no variable refresh rate support. The Samsung TU8000 is a budget TV in Samsung's 2020 lineup, replacing the Samsung RU8000 from 2019. It sits above the Samsung TU7000 and below the Samsung RU9000. The TU8000's main competitors are the Sony X750H, TCL5 Series S535 2020 QLED, and the Hisense H8G. The TV has an excellent design. It's similar to Samsung's entry-level TV in the QLED lineup, the Samsung Q60 Q60T QLED, except its borders are a slightly darker shade of gray. Overall, it has a simple and modern design with thin bezels. The feet are inserted into the TV itself, so you don't need to screw them on. The Samsung TU8000 is a decent TV for a variety of uses. Its high contrast ratio produces deep blacks, so it performs well in dark rooms. However, it doesn't get very bright, so highlights fail to pop in HDR, and it may struggle with glare in bright rooms. On the upside, gamers should appreciate the low input lag and decently fast response time. At number 6. Sony X950H 85-inch. The Sony X950H is a great 4K TV that delivers a stunning HDR experience with its high peak brightness and impressive color gamut. It has a full array local dimming feature to enhance its already great contrast ratio further, making it a very good choice for darkroom viewing. Like its predecessor, the Sony X950G, it has excellent color accuracy out of the box, so you may not need to calibrate it to get the best viewing experience. Its motion handling is impressive, as it has a fast response time and an optional black frame insertion feature to improve clarity. Gamers should appreciate its incredibly low input lag, however, the lack of variable refresh rate support is disappointing. Although it has Sony's X wide angle layer, its viewing angles remain mediocre and aren't ideal for wide seating arrangements. On the upside, reflection handling has improved significantly and so has gray uniformity, which is good news for sports fans. The Sony X950H is Sony's 2020 flagship 4K LED TV and the replacement of 2019 Sony X950G. It sits right below Sony's Masters series, which includes their OLEDs and the 8K Sony Z8H, and its main competitors are the Samsung Q80Q80T QLED and the Vizio P-Series Quantum X2020. The Sony X950H is great for most uses. It's well suited for any type of lighting conditions, as it has a great contrast ratio that allows it to produce deep blacks, and its excellent peak brightness can easily overcome glare. It delivers a great HDR experience and upscales lower resolution content from cable TV well. It has a fast response time and low input lag, but there are no advanced gaming features like VRR. It can display Chroma 444 and is immune to permanent burn-in, making it a very good choice for use as a PC monitor. 
For more information and price, check out the product links in description, underneath the video. Halfway of my listed number 5. LG OLED 77 GX PUA, 77 inch. The LG CX is one of two entry-level OLED TVs in LG's 2020 lineup, and like any OLED, it delivers excellent picture quality. It's packed with gaming features such as FreeSync variable refresh rate support and G-Sync compatibility to reduce screen tearing. It has a near-instant response time and low input lag as well. It individually turns off pixels, which results in an infinite contrast ratio and perfect black uniformity, making it a perfect choice for watching movies in dark rooms. It also has wide viewing angles for when you want to watch TV with a large group of people. It displays a wide color gamut for HDR content, but it only has decent peak brightness in HDR, so some highlights may not be as vivid as the creator intended. Like any OLED, it has the risk of permanent burn-in, but we don't expect this to be a problem for those who watch varied content. Alongside the LG BX, the LG CX OLED is one of two entry-level TVs in LG's 2020 OLED lineup. It's a direct replacement to the LG C9 OLED and sits below LG GX OLED. Since there aren't many OLED TVs on the market, its main competitors are other LG TVs, the Sony A8H OLED and the Vizio OLED 2020. Its LED competitors are the Samsung Q90Q90TQLED and the Vizio P-Series Quantum X2020. The LG CX has a sleek design with a premium feel to it, and it looks very similar to the LG C9 OLED. The silver metal on the back is a bit darker than its predecessor, but it has the same stand that allows the TV to sit close to the table. The stand is very solid, and the TV doesn't wobble all that much. It's almost as white as the TV, so you need a big table to place it on. Also, since the TV sits so low to the table, placing a soundbar in front of it could potentially obstruct the screen. Coming in at number 4 of my list. Samsung QN85Q70TAFXZA85 inch. The Samsung Q70Q70TQLED is a good all-around 4K TV from Samsung's 2020 QLED lineup. It delivers good performance for most uses and comes with some extra features like variable refresh rate support to reduce screen tearing in games. The TV has a high 120Hz refresh rate and an OK response time. There's a black frame insertion feature to help reduce motion blur. It also has an incredibly low input lag, making for a responsive gaming experience. The TV uses a VI panel with a fantastic contrast ratio and remarkable black uniformity, producing deep inky blacks, even though it lacks a local dimming feature. Unfortunately, it has poor viewing angles, so the image looks washed out from the side, but this is typical of TVs with VI panels. While it gets bright enough to combat glare and has decent reflection handling for well-lit rooms, it can't get bright enough to deliver a truly satisfying HDR experience. This is a mid-range TV from the 2020 QLED lineup. It sits between the Samsung Q60Q60T QLED and the Samsung Q80Q80T QLED. Its main competitors are the LG NAN090 and the Sony X900H. The Samsung Q70T has an excellent design that's very similar to the Samsung Q70Q70R QLED, as well as its smaller sibling the Samsung Q60Q60T QLED. It's minimalist, with very thin bezels and wide set feet, and it comes with clips for cable management. The stand is simple and supports the TV well, but there's still a bit of wobble when nudged. The feet are wide set and point outwards, so it requires a fairly large table to put it on if you don't plan on wall mounting it. They no longer need to be screwed in, as you only need to slide them into place, making the setup process much easier. Unfortunately, they're not reversible. At number 3. Samsung Q950T 85-inch. The Samsung Q950TS represents part of the company's latest and most concerted attempt to persuade the buying public that a massive and massively overspecified TV is not only reasonable, but actually quite a sensible proposition. That's a bit of a tough sell for two reasons. For one, 8K TVs are horribly expensive, and, for another, there being next to no native content available. But Samsung does, at least, seem to be attempting to democratize this technology, 
inasmuch as it seems to want to keep the price of its 8K TVs just the right side of preposterous. Yes, 8K cameras exist and yes, Netflix has apparently used one to develop some content. And yes, if this summer's Tokyo Olympics don't succumb to coronavirus paranoia then Japanese broadcaster NHK plans to broadcast the entire shebang in 8K. But really, 8K content in any meaningful quantity still looks a long way off. But if it's going to make any sort of case for itself at all, the Q950TS is going to have to perform miracles with the lower resolution stuff it'll spend all its time displaying. Thankfully, it absolutely does. A 75-inch screen is big in anyone's language, and Samsung has managed to wrap it in what is genuinely the briefest bezel ever seen on a production TV. At 2mm thick it's virtually non-existent, and if you sit a sensible distance from this TV it genuinely does disappear from view. As party tricks go, this is a good one. For more information and price, check out the product links in description, underneath the video. Coming at number 2, Samsung QN85 QN900 AFX ZA 85-inch Neo. The new Samsung Neo QN900 QLED is going to be the first 8K TV for a lot of people who want to absolutely splurge on their next television purchase and blissfully buy into Samsung's vision for top-end TVs in 2021. Big, bright, beautiful and before our own eyes, the 85-inch Neo QN900 stood in front of us ahead of CES 2021 running a looped 8K video that showed off exactly where this display makes its biggest improvements. The answer, pretty much everywhere, including a price drop compared to last year's flagship set. Samsung's first trick for 2021 involves shrinking its LEDs to 1 40th of their traditional size to increase both brightness and black levels. This allows for more precision and less blooming, so you won't see bright areas of the screen unnaturally bleed over into darker spots, like on some TVs, that use local dimming. Exclusive to the QN900 is matrixing technology that reduces the space between the edges of the screen, where pixels end and the incredibly thin bezels begin. It's a small change by definition, but a big enough deal to use Samsung's edge-to-edge -edge infinity screen moniker from the Galaxy Phone series. Of course, at screen sizes of 65, 75, and 85 inches, it's at a whole different scale here than the forthcoming Galaxy S21. And number 1. Samsung Q90T 85-inch. The Samsung Q90T is an excellent 4K QLED TV. It's feature-rich, and it delivers stunning picture quality in nearly every type of content. Its simple and elegant design should fit easily into any room, and it performs well in both dark or bright environments. Motion handling is superb thanks to its incredibly fast response time and black frame insertion feature, and gamers should be pleased with its exceptionally low input lag and FreeSync support. HDR content is delivered with vibrant colors and bright highlights, as it has an impressive color gamut and high peak brightness. Its Tizen OS interface is easy to navigate, and there are tons of apps available. There are some minor uniformity issues that may disappoint sports fans, but as a whole, it's a TV that should satisfy most people. The Samsung Q90T is Samsung's flagship TV for their 2020 lineup of 4K QLED TVs. Since Samsung has shifted their lineup, this is a replacement of the Samsung Q80 Q80R QLED and not the Samsung Q90 Q90R QLED. There's a Q95T that's closer to the Q90R, as it still has the One Connect box, but it's only available in Europe. The Q90TS main competitors are the LG BX OLED, the Sony X950H, and the Vizio P Series Quantum X2020. The Samsung Q90T has an exceptional design. It's clean, modern, and simple. The bezels are thin on all sides, and the stand is center-mounted, similar to the Samsung Q90Q90R QLED. The biggest change is the loss of the One Connect box, as this TV is more of a replacement for the Samsung Q80Q80R QLED. There's a Q95T model that still has the One Connect box, but it seems to be available only in Europe at this time. For more information and price, check out the product links in description, underneath the video. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe my channel, share this video and hit the like button.